one of the goals of the Board of Education for the 2015-16 school year is to increase the amount of communication that we have with our with our public. Originally, the idea was to use a recording of this nature to communicate with our staff, and the, the thought kind of grew to, why not make this available to our general public? I'm using a program that's called Screencast-O-Matic, and it gives me an opportunity to record information to to share with you and uh, I want to cover the information from the Board of Education meeting from Monday September 14th today is September 15th so it is one day later and I wanted to just share with you some information uh, under item number three in the consent agenda we added a topic we added uh, Linda White as requesting a personal day and uh, these are here uh, in this column because according to the negotiated agreement, any days during professional development days that are requested need to have board approval. And so that's why uh, you will see those sometimes on the agenda for the Board of Education meeting. Uh, the next uh, agenda change was item number 11. Instead of KSDE, the policy changes came from KASB, the Kansas Association of School Boards. And we added item 13A, an action item for executive session to protect the identity of students. That executive session was to give board members an opportunity if they wish to go into executive session to discuss item number 14. And finally, the Board of Education struck number 15 uh, from the agenda that will be on the October Board of Education meeting. To start off our meeting, the board had an opportunity to check in regarding boardsmanship. The Board of Education has had six meetings in two and a half months. That is a lot of meetings in a short amount of time. Some of those meetings uh, have involved some differences of opinion. And so this was an opportunity for the board to talk about how their relationship has been and what we can do to improve uh, working together as a team. And so we had that opportunity and some good ideas from the Board of Education on number two from the agenda. The board approved the consent agenda. Uh, we moved on to item number four. We heard from the public. There were a number of people there uh, who were speaking uh, in regard to uh, item number 10, uh, which was this regarding the strategic plan and the idea for potential benchmarks for schools for financial viability. And uh, everybody I believe that spoke were speaking against benchmarks and, uh, and against that topic. Uh, we do have one member of the public, Mr. Bob Carson, asked to have an opportunity to speak when we got to number 10, uh, the strategic plan, which President Reznicek granted him that opportunity and he did speak at that time. The uh, principal's building reports were provided and there were no questions. Uh, Janelle Bowden uh, did indicate that uh, a, one of our teachers, Thelma Strathman, is being inducted in the Highland Community College Hall of Fame. So congratulations goes out to Thelma Strathman. The next item on the agenda, number five, uh, was uh, USD 113 assessment information. For the past three months, we have been looking at assessment information. There have been some concerns within our district about the amount of time that is spent with assessments. Dr. Hanselcheck provided information to the Board of Education uh, regarding assessments and the, the purpose for the various assessments that are given. Uh, we give assessments in our district for scope and sequence of our curriculum to measure how we're doing, to uh, ascertain whether or not teachers need to reteach a concept or whether they can move on a little bit a little bit quicker the the idea is to work smarter not necessarily harder uh, when it comes to using that form of assessment another form of assessment is used for MTSS which is the multi-tiered system of support and uh, assessments are also tied to teacher evaluation that is something that is relatively new for us in Kansas, but that was required uh, starting this year uh, is, the, is the year that we begin using assessments that are tied to evaluation. The next item for conversation number six was the board took a look at information that's available on the Kansas uh, website. 
and uh, this is through Kansas State Department of Education. Uh, I have the opportunity to log in and to to gather information that the that the state collects. Uh, there is information for the district as well as for individual schools, uh, and it's not just uh, for the current year, but for a number of past years. Uh, one of the challenges for USD 113 is that the information that is available uh, is not does not go past uh, to the fiscal year 2011 because that was the first year that USD 113 existed. Uh, so there's attendance rate, headcount, enrollment, percent of missed school days, which is some interesting information. Uh, there is more information for our district in regard to our educators and how many years of experience they have. And uh, this is not was not a surprise to me uh, that our teachers are more experienced than the average in the state of Kansas. And that is one of our one of our targeted areas that we want to uh, retain quality educators. And I think that for the most part, we are doing a good job of that. Uh, the years of experience uh, we can look at with with different areas. Uh, another area to look at uh, is the percent of educators with less than three years of experience. Of course, with a, a more experienced staff, you would expect the uh, this number to be lower than the state average. And so uh, that is good information for us to, to look at as we, as we take a look at our district. Another area of information that is valuable is in the area of college readiness. Uh, there is a lot of information that's available. Uh, one of the areas that we looked at is post-secondary enrollment rates and uh, these are these are very good rates uh, we we do have the opportunity in our district to to take a number of courses that are for dual credit and that is through Highland Community College and if you take a look at at this number here post-secondary enrollment locations Highland Community College ranks very high uh, for us and most of that is because our kids have the opportunity to take dual credit courses while there are students in high school. Uh, we can take a look at uh, post-secondary retention metrics, and that is the, the number of students that we have that gain at least one year of college credit. And as you can take a look here, comparing Prairie Hills to the state, uh, we do very well in that area. Another area that we do well in is uh, post-secondary remedial coursework. You can see the state average and you can see where Prairie Hills ranks over the over the well over the last three years. We we still are missing some information uh, that is the state has not provided for us yet. It is uh, it is good to take a look at some of this information. We get an idea of where Prairie Hills is with the rest of the state. Uh, the next screen that we're going to look at shows the district aggregate for post secondary remedial overview. And so if kids uh, need to have remedial assistance in the area of math, 9.6% of our kids did, uh, reading 2.4%, English 2.4%. And uh, when we compare that information with the state average, uh, you can see that Prairie Hills does extremely well uh, in the area of preparing our kids for post-secondary education. Um, some other information is available, SAT scores. We don't have a lot of students take SAT scores or take the SAT test, and uh, so that information is fairly incomplete. Another area that is incomplete is uh, AP courses taken. AP stands for Advanced Placement, and uh, we do not have any Advanced Placement courses in our district. We, we hope that our dual credit courses through Highland Community College gives us the opportunity to challenge students as well as what we offer within the regular curriculum. Degree completion is available. That is fairly incomplete for our district since we are a relatively young district. And uh, the graduate employment information for us is incomplete as well. They do not have specific information in there for our district that is at the state level. So that was the, the SEEK information, and uh, that was good information for us to have And uh, as we continue to take a look at our district. The next item on the agenda was number seven, and that was the uh, information about the Wetmore football field. Uh, most of you know that this is the first year that 
Wetmore has had their own high school team. They are competing at the junior varsity level. Next year, they will be competing at the varsity level. And the community has been hard at work to see that they have a, a place to, to have home field games. And so what you're looking at here is a, a picture of the, the baseball complexes here, and that is on the north end of Wetmore. And uh, this, the, the line here uh, is the dividing line uh, between city property and then school property. So the school owns this property down here, and the Wetmore Booster Club is proposing that a football field be, be implemented, constructed, uh, seeded uh, in this area right here that currently belongs to the city of Wetmore. And so USD 113 entered into a lease agreement with the Wetmore Cardinal Booster Club as well as with the city of Wetmore so that uh, the Booster Club can begin construction and seeding uh, to get this to get the football field seated so it's ready to go hopefully for home games in 2016. The next item on the agenda number eight Blue Valley Tech Support. Uh, our district uh, has been looking at a backup for our uh, tech uh, employee. One of our employees uh, is, is um, Ethan and uh, Ethan does a lot of work for us, and we wanted to find a way to have some support in the event that something would happen to Ethan, or Ethan was unavailable for some reason, we have an opportunity for that tech support. Uh, the next item that uh, we took a look at is the, um, is the month to date, I'm trying to find it here, the month to date information for our district that shows how we've been doing uh, in regard to spending. And one of the areas that we looked at a lot last year was we used this document to gauge where we were with our spending. And we are not too far into the school year, uh, being in the middle of September, two and a half months in. But one of the areas that, that I would like to see is with the reductions that we made, we should be able to see that we are spending less money this year than we did last year. Even though uh, staff did receive a very modest increase uh, in salary, we are expecting to see uh, our expenditures by the end of the year considerably less than they were last year. So uh, I'm hoping that number improves uh, in the next few months. Uh, then looking at capital outlay and special ed, uh, we break them out separately. Uh, we are using more of our capital outlay funds for general operating expenses. Under the new law, we are able to do that, and we're hoping to cover some of the, some of the gap that we have between uh, what we are going to have for revenue and what we're going to have for actual expenditures. We are expecting to spend more money than we take in this year, and we're planning on using capital outlay for some of the operating expenses to cover that gap. The next item on the agenda was the strategic plan. And with the strategic plan, the, the Board of Education had made a number of recommendations to, to work on. Uh, we, we do have a redesign of our logo uh, for our district. We also have uh, a, new, a new saying for our district, preparing kids, shaping the future. We wanted to have something short and sweet that, that communicated what we do in our district. Uh, within, the, within the strategic plan, we have four goals, student learning, recruitment and retention of quality staff, community engagement and district cohesion, and finally, district budget. Uh, looking at the, the different target areas, some changes were made from the last Special Board of Education meeting. The, the Rose standards was added uh, into the strategic plan that was not in there before. We also numbered our action steps so that we're able to identify what action step we're talking about when we talk about uh, the strategic plan. Most of the conversation Monday night surrounded the target area of district budget and uh, had to do with item number one 
and the potential for the Board of Education to establish benchmarks. Um, we have been talking about defining uh, financial viability for our district. This is the, the third meeting that we have had information about the strategic plan. This is actually the second meeting that we have talked about the potential for uh, benchmarks. And uh, much of the conversation Monday night uh, involved each board member communicating his or her position on defining the financial viability of schools within the district. The different methods of using standards or benchmarks to identify the financial goal for district buildings was discussed at length, but no decisions were made. At the end of the conversation, the board voted 7-0 in support of a method for defining financial viability in USD 113. That method has yet to be determined. Item number 11, uh, Kansas Association of School Boards annually recommends policy changes for all districts in the state, and uh, a lot of those changes have to do with, with changed uh, laws uh, that are passed or uh, different court cases that have changed, <clears throat> excuse me, the emphasis uh, that the Kansas Association of School Boards is recommending for districts. So a lot of the policy changes uh, had to do with discrimination. Uh, this time around, there was one policy, policy EDAA, that the Board of Education had to vote on separately because there were two different options. And essentially, that, that policy involves the, the opportunity for Board of Education to provide transportation in the summertime to different sports or different teams that are going to camps and our Board of Education voted to to not allow uh, the summer transportation to camps for athletics. <clears throat> the next item, <coughs> excuse me, number 12, we, we had a conversation about the transition from part-time to full-time for our Sabetha Elementary School state preschool teacher. In the past, we have had a halftime teacher, and uh, this program has seen the, the numbers grow considerably, especially after the closing of Head Start in Sabetha, which was a big loss to our community. And so we had 16 students in that program. Uh, the students do qualify on a number of uh, six at-risk qualifiers, and so the students that are in there are typically uh, typically need a lot of attention. And so the board voted to go ahead and expand that program, uh, at least for this year, from part-time to full-time. Two additional policies were, were looked at. And uh, whenever we do a policy change, we have to have two months of time. So there has to be a first read one month and then the next month is the second read. And so item number 11 was the second read for those policy changes. Item number 13 is the first read for two policy changes. JDDC-R is our bullying policy, and that uh, emphasizes that we are using our positive behavior support program for our bullying policy and for our procedures. And the next item, LDDA, uh, is an item for uh, federal programs and what we have to do for accounting purposes for those federal programs. When the board came to item number 13A, they voted to not have that executive session. They did approve textbook waiver requests for those who had applied for those requests and who qualified for free lunches. A number of people had made requests who qualified for reduced lunches or who didn't qualify for free or reduced lunches at all, and those requests were denied by the Board of Education. The last item on the agenda is set up building tours for Board of Education members. The Board decided that they wanted to see students in the buildings, and so they went ahead and set a tentative date of October 15th for board tours and they are going to do that during the day so that they can see kids in the buildings, which is where really when you, you get a feel for the, the lifeblood of a school building is when the kids are there. And so I commend the board for making that commitment to 
giving up a day out of their busy schedule to go on tours of our facilities within our district. Thank you for uh, paying attention to this uh, program. Uh, hopefully I will get better at this as I do a few more, uh, but we will, we will go ahead and try to continue doing this as we go through our school year. If you have any feedback, please uh, do not hesitate to give me a call at the Board of Education office. That number is 284-2175. Thank you.